morning, everybody, and welcome virtually to First Federated Church. However you have joined us, we are glad you are here. We appreciate the fine folks at WFMJ for helping to make this possible on their website. And also, we are streaming on our Facebook page at First Federated Church and also on YouTube. However you got here, warm up your coffee, be with us, and enjoy this time together. If we haven't met, my name's Jack. I'm privileged to be the pastor here, and I look forward to getting to meet you in person real soon. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we are going to sing. Gracious loving God, we thank you for this morning and the opportunity to be together even if we are apart. And we ask in these moments together we, that we might hear some words that offer us encouragement and hope and point us in a direction that you would have us go. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
this time of uh, prayer today, there's obviously so many things that are on our hearts and minds, and um, foremost for um, the Booth family, our condolences to them on the passing of uh, Marion. She died a little bit after 7 o'clock Saturday morning, and um, just a, a wonderful a uh, lady who meant a lot to me. We taught Sunday school together for a year, a, a number of years ago, and um, just an excellent example of uh, how to live the Christian life. So our condolences to Don and, and uh, all of the, the Booth family. We also especially keep in prayer Melinda Miller Liley, some of you may know her. She's from North Jackson and she works at uh, Humility House in Austin Town. And uh, she was diagnosed on Monday with COVID 19. And um, she is uh, working on getting be better, and, um, and it has been somewhat of a struggle. So we, we, keep, we keep her in prayer and we hope that, that Bob stays well. And uh, so certainly um, anyone that's been impacted by COVID-19, we especially keep in prayer. Certainly you probably know someone by now personally and perhaps very well uh, that has either contracted it or uh, maybe sadly even died. So um, it, there is uncertainty in this time and uh, let's come to the certainty that we seek in prayer with Jesus. So let us pray. God, our creator, we pray for brothers and sisters who suffer from the many effects of COVID-19. From the discomfort of physical illness to the grief of death, from the intensity of long hours under stress by frontline workers to the isolation of quarantine, we pray to know your comforting presence. We especially pray for Marion today and lift her soul to your eternal care. And we pray for the comfort of Dawn and for Chuck and Pam and Lori. We pray for Melinda that she may continue her recovery. We bring to you the concerns of Clark and Dewey and Kathy and Chuck and Megan and Ralph and Chuck and Dennis and Helen and Donna, and Bill, Gay, and Joe, and Gracie, Emily, and Jenny, and Bill, and Beverly, Ashley, and Clayton, Donna, and Bob, Bonnie, and Sarah, and Mike, and Aaron, and Shauna, and Dominic, Eddie, Paul and Ruth and Mike and Bonnie and the hopefulness of Steve and Pat as they make plans to make a cross-country move. As Earth Day approaches, help us to have a renewed sense of duty not just to the human sick but to mother earth who has been trying to warn us of the consequences of our lack of care storms and droughts intensified by human induced climate change all manner of species created by your hand suffering and even disappearing We hold in prayer and accountability world leaders 
delegated to make decisions for life, not just in their own nation, but for the entire planet. We pray that the web of life may be mended through courageous actions to limit the negative effects of humans. We pray for right actions of all people, individuals, families, and corporations that we would adapt better ways to help our already suffering earth community. We pray that your love and wisdom will inspire our desire to work for a healthier world beyond our present concern to survive a virus. Give us words of truth so that we may understand how to do our part to heal the physically and spiritually sick. May your love transform us and our world with new steps toward life, for the future of all children. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us share together this serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Have a little faith. 
faith in me Have a little faith in me Well, I've been loving you for such a long time For you to have a little faith in me We've got time, time is our friend Cause there is no end All you gotta do is have a little faith Thank you for that. Let's hear what uh, Peter has to say about a little faith. What a God we have and how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him, yet you trust him with laughter and singing. Because you kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking forward to, total salvation. What a God we have. How fortunate we are to have this God keeping careful watch over us and the future. Just who the heck is Peter talking to? Doesn't he watch the news? This guy, Jesus called the rock? Has he been living under one? So far as I know, while there was plenty of disease, there was not a viral pandemic in Peter's day. Peter lived and died in a period of time when Rome was the dominant world power. The emperor claimed total control over everyone's lives to the point of persecution and even death, which was Peter's fate. Peter was an end-of-time believer. He thought, like many of the new Christian faith, that Jesus was going to come back to earth in their lifetime. Now, if the disciple Peter is actually the author of the letter, it was written during the reign of Nero, 
when anti-persecution, anti-Christian persecutions had begun. So you probably heard the legend that uh, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. With no evidence to back up his claim, Nero accused Christians of starting the fire. Other scholars say this letter is more likely written by a student of Peter during the reign of Trajan when the persecution of Christians in the Roman territories outside of Italy got started. Knowing that this letter was sent to the Christians in what is now modern-day Turkey, that timing makes a bit more sense. No matter the time, being Christian put you at odds with the government, and that put your employment opportunities in jeopardy. For reasons different from ours, times were very tough for these new believers, and this letter is meant to give them hope and encouragement. Whoever wrote this letter does a pretty neat job of describing the trials that test one's faith. Faith that endures is the faith that has been tested by fire, like precious gold. And the gold that makes our jewelry doesn't come out of the ground looking like this. Gold right out of the ground, it's actually a bit homely looking all mixed together with other semi-precious ores and various minerals. Only after going through the intense heat of a smelting fire do the impurities bubble up and the heavier gold settles out, ready to be fashioned into something beautiful that can have and like my wedding ring, represent lasting value. Now, I don't think too many of us have the ability at home to create a fire intense enough to smelt gold. You can, however, go online and find instructions on how to use some acids and other noxious chemicals to literally boil down that extra gold stuff that you have laying around while filling your kitchen with toxic fumes. <laughs> now, even though the price of gold is trading around $1,750 an ounce, give or take, you might be very disappointed to find out how little gold is actually in your jewelry because usually once gold is smelted, it is once again mixed with other metals to make a stronger alloy. Isn't that interesting? For all of its reflected beauty, pure gold isn't strong enough to stand on its own. It needs to be mixed with something less glamorous to be strong enough to stand up to use. For a faith to shine like gold, it must endure the pain of fire. And to be strong, it must have an alloy, the ally we have in Jesus Christ. Mr. Rogers said, there is no normal life that is free of pain. It's the very wrestling with our problems that can be the impetus for our growth. 
Life is far from normal right now, isn't it? Can we at least get a little break from the growing pains, God? The news is full of the best and worst of humanity, isn't it? We see ye of little faith hoarding supplies. I actually went to the grocery store yesterday for the first time in two weeks. No toilet paper. It's a thing. (laughs) And then we see others that are mistaking spiritual faith for a physical shield. We see faith more precious than gold, tending to the sick and the dying. Some people we know who work not just in hospitals, but also nursing homes. Faithful people are checking up on and and helping neighbors and total strangers. Doubt creeps into our own faith when we ask ourselves or someone else accuses us of trusting science more than God. Why, oh why, won't people use the brain God gave them? Our brains filter messages differently, don't they? Can our brains see the science of the earth crying out to us? Have you seen the images of cleaner air and water in cities around the world? What is possible when humans change their behavior? That's an Earth Day message in real time. As we struggle with issues of faith and the practicality of physical distancing orders and the many layers of upheaval in our lives, can we use our faith to encourage, even demand, of our species a new way of life when this pandemic is over? Will we seek ever greener ways of producing all the things that we consume. It boggles my mind when I hear the end timers use their biblical literalism to claim we are in the last days and everything is God's will while conveniently dismissing the intention of the creation story. God giving humans dominion over the earth doesn't give us permission to drive any species to extinction nor to exhaust the resources God created while fouling the air and dumping our sludge in the water. Peter, as an end timer, thought Jesus was coming back in his lifetime. The necessity of an Earth Day observance would have been an incredibly foreign concept to him. Now, yes, Jerusalem had a city dump that burned continually and stunk to high heaven. But Peter and the working class people of his day would have used the resources available to them as a matter of economics and responsibility. As end time believers, they trusted that they were going to be rewarded with new heavenly life precisely because they faithfully took care of each other and all of God's creation. 
As such, Peter is telling his readers that their gold, it's no use to them in heaven. For all of the influencers screaming that the world needs to get back to work, I've got this question. How much use is all the world's gold in this pandemic? I don't hear scientists clamoring for a return to the old way of doing business. Two thousand years ago, Peter said that the tests we endure will refine, purify our faith. Twenty-five years ago, Mr. Rogers said, we live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. I consider those people my heroes. May your faith make you a hero. Amen. You don't have to be here in person to support the great things going on at First Federated Church. Go to our website at firstfederatedchurch.net and click on the Give Now tab up in the right-hand corner or use your smartphone with the Give Plus mobile app. You can support us from wherever you are, firstfederatedchurch.net or the Give Plus mobile app. Let's pray over these offerings that are presented today. Gracious, loving God, we thank you for the many gifts that people are sharing with this church that we may, in turn, return that money to our community. We ask a blessing on these gifts and on the giver that all of us may grow together in faithful love and service to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
beautiful one that we adore, Christ Jesus, is still alive. And Jesus will be alive in you through the faith that you share by being for the world, the body of Christ, reaching out and welcoming all and growing together in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Thank you.